So are we ready to talk about binding today? Are you, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Go for it. Sure, yeah. So we, Janet had asked me to talk about binding. And Janet, do you have particular questions you wanted to answer or where were you stuck? Um, I love how they always say, measure the outside of the quilt and then it sort of dies off. <laughs> and okay. I don't talk about it anymore. So, um, I, you know, put on a binding on that black quilt that I was wrapping up twice. <laughs> yeah. And it seems like I always am doing the binding twice. <laughs> oh, dear. But, you know, I understand the concept of, um, you know, putting the two, you cut it 12 and a half inches, two and a half inches, and then you okay. put the right sides together and make the diagonal. And hopefully I figured that part out because otherwise I was having um, some with the right sides together and the wrong sides together. So maybe if you could just, you know, and start after um, how you do it, starting after measuring so you have like okay. a size of a quilt and a, si and a length of strips that you're going to make. Okay, so, <laughs> so you, you all challenged me because if I'm going to talk about binding and I needed pictures and examples for you, I had to have something to bind. So. Um, I wound up making a quilt this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> what? A whole quilt? Yep. Okay. As a matter of fact, it's the one we designed. You remember this one? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Well, you took you took a little bit of uh, 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 intake and what we stated on the outsides of it. And that way, the uh, one, two, three, four, five pictures fit right in. Right. So this is the design that we came up with last week and I needed to make a quilt. So these are things from my stash that seemed like they would go with it. And I, I made myself a pattern and I did paper piecing and noticed that I had to have two. There's, there's another one under there that points in the other direction. So I, there were two that point to the right and two that point to the left. And this is the fabrics I came up with that I thought would work. So it looks like this. So this is the point Janet will recognize where you have the design area of the quilt done and the batting and the backing. And, and all the cover colors uh, mix right in and blends right in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so anyway, um, so I, I quilted it. So we, I've done the stitching and we can talk about the other parts of the process at another time. Good morning, Millicent. Good morning. Hi. So, Hi. so this has been quilted. It's ready now to be bound. So the first thing we have to do is trim it. And this is my setup for trimming a quilt. I, I put up this table this is one of those uh, whatever tables, you know, it's, it's actually a plastic top and metal and it, it folds up and then folds in half. So it, oh. your storage is about four by four, um, but it sets up to this wonderful six foot table. And um, I put my biggest mat out and my shape cut. And I'll show you what I do with this shape cut. You've seen this before because we have one at the center, right? And a cutter. So that's my setup. And I put it in the middle of the room so that the quilt can flop over on all sides. And I can move the quilt wherever I want it. So whenever I'm doing any cutting, you need the green board underneath so you don't put your table. And also you'll get a better cut and it'll protect your blade. So and be sure you have your green board underneath where you're going to cut. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. 
Now I take the shape cut and I put it on the corner. And what the reason I like this gadget is that I have the vertical line here as well as the horizontal line. Okay, so especially when I'm working on a corner, I can see exactly if I were to cut here and here, I'd make a square corner. And you notice it's, it's a little bit off. My corners are always a tiny bit off. Don't worry about that. But we're just going to make it right. Okay, so I've lined up this this line on the shape cut against that seam. <laughs> okay, so we've, we've got this seam to use as a guide. Notice I'm not using the edge. I'm using this seam to mark where I'm going to be paying attention. And so now I can square the corner. <laughs> We're going to watch this line and um, and this line. And we're going to cut along this line. So it has a little groove here. You just put your blade right in the groove and cut along. And then we'll just move across the table. So here I'm doing it again. And you can see I'm making a tiny little bit of adjustment. An eighth of an inch here or there, nobody's going to notice. But I'm going to try to keep this line as consistent as possible. And now I'm coming on to another corner. So at this corner, I'm going to check again where's the vertical as well as the horizontal. And you compromise when you need to. So here I've turned the corner. You can see there's a little bit of um, batting that's showing through here. Um, but I just make sure that it, if, if there is a little batting showing, that it's going to be inside the seam. But I'm still going to have a strong seam. So that's about an eighth of an inch. My actual sewing line is going to be here. So that seam will be OK. Okay, and here, yeah, it's not square. So we're going to make it square. So now I've got it all cut out. So this is trimmed. It's not bound yet. But you can see I've got a nice even line to deal with. And that, that's, to me, that's the first step in binding, is to get yourself a nice edge that's clean and ready to go. And you've seen me do this with fabric in the center. So I press it, I fold it lengthwise, then I fold it a second time lengthwise. So now I have a piece that's about 11 inches wide. This is much more manageable. And then I just fan fold it. So now I've stretched it out across my board so that I can make my strips for the binding. And I could do it with a regular ruler, but we I'm going to use that shape cut again and show you what I do with a shape cut. So what's neat with it is you've got this horizontal line. You can get it lined up uh, against the fabric so you know that it's going to be straight in this direction. And if it's not quite here, then we're going to make a first cut that's just going to trim that edge and make it perfect. Okay, because if I don't trim this edge, then the, this first strip is going to be wrong. See what I mean? So you need to make sure you've got a really square piece and we're going to cut all of it. So align it against the edge of the fabric and make sure that your starting cut is going to be exactly perpendicular to the fabric. So if we don't make it, you can see that that first strip would be too fat in the, here and, and the right length of the other one. So it'll make your binding uneven. So using the shape cut, I ran my um, blade every two inches to make a two inch. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna do the final sewing on the machine, then I would cut two and a half. But for hand sewing, I I use a two inch. So this is that we trimmed up that extra. I'm sorry. Great for the machine, right? You're allowing more inches, uh, that quarter, two and a quarter inch, because when you're sewing on the machine, right? Yeah, if you're sewing on the machine, you want to have a little bit more 
overlap to deal with. Um, it, it just makes it easier. But if you're doing it by hand, I'll show you how I do it by hand. All right, so I've cut all these. Uh, without moving the shape cut one time, I was able to cut six two-inch strips, just zip, 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 OK? And now the next step is we're going to lay out one of these strips. Before it was folded in fourths, the way I had that fan folded piece of material. But now I'm going to lay it out so that it's just one thickness. OK, here my, my selvages are both on this end, and here's the fold. Now, here, here comes the trick. And because I'm using batik here, you can't really tell what's the front and what's the back. So we're going to have to do that just by behaving consistently. But um, usually, you can tell the front from the back of the fabric. And at this point, what I want is I want the, both the right sides up. So I turn one. And usually, I'm holding it in my hand. And um, I just turn the, the back one and then lay it down. So you just want one little twist here so that both right sides are up and both salvages are on the same end. Is that considered face to face? No, we want both the good faces up. And I'll, I'll show so, you why. So you I mean, right both now. Both faces and you put them together. And then you open it up. I understand. And that's why this is, it will seem a little illogical for a minute, but stay with me because I'll explain why, why I'm doing that. Okay, so I want both right sides up and the one, the one twist is down here on my left. I'm right handed. So if you're left handed, just reverse everything. So I keep stacking them up. You know, I made six strips, so I've got three in this pile, three in this pile. All my salvages are here. All the, the faces of the material are all up. And here's where I've just twisted it once. I'm not worried about that part, but I need this to be straight and together in the two stacks. Now comes the fun part. So I take one of these stacks and I put it against the 45 degree line on the board. This is another reason why it's wonderful to have such a board. So you put it on the 45 degree line and now look, if I want to make a cut, all I have to do is follow this vertical line and I'll get a perfect 45 degree angle. So I'm going to cut them all diagonally. I'm using my ruler going against that vertical line. It's in position on the 45 degree line. So I'm going to get a perfect 45 degree angle right there. OK, and I just go and cut that guy up. And voila, we have the binding strips with nice, neat diagonals. And now they're ready to be to sewn together. OK. So you put two strips together like this on the diagonal. Now, now Claire, our right sides are together because now we're going to sew the seam. But the reason I had them all facing up is so that the angles would all be correct. If you leave them go every old which way, then you get confused at the end. So by, by cutting them all exactly the same way, the, it's perfect. You don't have to think about it. So isn't that what you do with bias binding too? Yes, it is. Exactly. That's exactly what you do with bias binding. You may not say much, but I'm observing a lot. Very yeah. good. <laughs> You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And if we were making bias binding at this point, it would look exactly the same. Yes. So we're going to overlap them. This is what they call rabbit ears. We have little oh. rabbit ears sticking out. And the idea is that we're going to sew from this notch to this notch. It doesn't matter if it's not a perfect quarter inch. It could be a little bit short, could be a little bit fat, doesn't matter. But we're going to go from notch to notch in order to have a nice, smooth running piece of binding. We're going to sew like that. Okay. 
And now here you can see I've stitched it in notch to notch. And I'm not worrying about how wide that is. As long as it's a healthy seam, that's all I care about. Now, you, with your iron, and here you, you do need to iron this, ladies. Uh, this finger pressing will not do here. You do need to press all your seams in one direction. And then you fold it exactly in half and press it with the seams on the inside. All the seams are on the inside. This is your finished binding that we're gonna use. And this is exactly what you would do for bias binding, except you'd have two, two twists, and we can talk about that another time. So we're gonna fold the seams are inside. They're laying nice and flat. The idea of having the flat seams and the diagonal is that you don't have too many seams bunched up together. So you don't have any lumps in your binding. It's as smooth as we can get it. All right, now we start the real binding part. Okay, what I do is I start about a foot down from one of the corners. I, I tend to do this on the top right corner for absolutely no good reason. It's just the way I'm routinized. Okay, so <laughs> you start about a it, leave yourself a tail here of about a foot. I stick a pin in it right there to remind me where my my starting point is. And now here's my pin. And I'm just going to line that binding up and sew it right along. And I haven't placed that yet, but you can see you, this edge, all these raw edges need to be exactly lined up. And then we will... Um, Whenever we have, here's a place you can see where there's some uh, batting showing through. Okay, this is one of those places where I let the batting, in order to make my straight line, the batting is a little bit farther back, but it's only about an eighth of an inch. So when I pull this green over, I will pull it to the edge of the batting. Okay, this is going to be the edge of my quilt, and I'll have a strong seam because I've got an eighth of batting, an eighth of fabric, and we're good. Okay. So just make sure you have a strong seam. You don't and want to pull out. You can see it really closely here, but it's the two piece, it's both sides of the binding that you're folded in half. It's not like it's one layer thick and then it's no, two this layers is, thick. This is two layers thick. This is where we, we folded it in half. Here's my fold. Here the raw edges are together. The raw edges are right aligned with the raw, sorry, I just clicked it. I shouldn't have clicked it. Um, but the, all the raw edges are together. And this seam now is going to make them all go inside your binding. Yeah, I did just one side and oh, it was a mess. <laughs> yes. and. Oh, the thing is that the binding on the edge is the thing that will wear out first. Right. Because it gets a lot, it rubs a lot on other things. So if you only make it one layer, it's going to wear out more rapidly. I've actually re replaced the binding on a quilt I did for my son about 30 years ago. And I, <laughs> I actually still had some of the original materials. <laughs> Did it again. Oh, <laughs> because, they're doing that on blankets nowadays, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So now we're approaching a corner. So this is a little tricky. So follow with me here. We're approaching a corner. We're, we're going to need to make room for it to be folded diagonally, which means we don't want to sew all the way to the end. If I sew all the way to the end, I'm not going to be able to fold it like that. Okay, so I need you to stop, not a quarter of an inch, but a little less than a quarter of an inch from the end of your quilt. So like this. Okay, so I've left a little bit here. And I just backstitched a little bit to make it strong. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a cake in the oven. I just found out I have to make a birthday cake today. That's why I'm running back and forth. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. So now we're going to fold it. We'll fold the corner up and, uh, 
so there's a fold under here. This dotted line is just to show you there's a fold under here. So I folded the green from this. We, we, we were traveling horizontally, right? Then I folded it up and now down again. So this fold is exactly aligned with this edge of the quilt. Okay, there's a diagonal fold under here. And here's the line that's going to start traveling in this direction. So you line that up. You can see I adjusted the... Me? What's the cake for? Um, Leah, what's your cake for? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. Go ahead and finish. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. So we folded it back down this way. And we're going to sew along this line. And here we do start at the very top. You can start right at the very top and make a line of stitching down here for the rest of the binding. We'll just keep traveling around. Okay, so every corner works the same way. You just carry on all the way around. And here I've, I've shown you that I've. this is one of those seams. So we folded it in half so you get part of that diagonal line and then the other part of the diagonal line. If I had just cut it straight across, I would have had all that seam piled up together and there would have been a lump in the binding. Okay, so the diagonal serves to help you make sure you don't have a lump in your binding. Okay, so when we round that last bend, <laughs> I've just I made that corner turn and I just sewed a couple of inches down just to make sure the corner is in good shape. And now I've got this gap. Here was my start and here's my finish. Okay. And now we're going to put this part together. This is a little tricky. So I lay it down and lay my binding pieces down and just stack them up. I've just twisted this guy out of the way. That's just the tail, okay? I've laid them on top of each other and I pick a point that's sort of right between the two. So here's where I started. Here's where I ended my stitching and I'm picking a point right in the middle, okay? And I'm with a needle and thread and you can tell I've got a contrasting thread here. I, I chose a red in hopes that you could see it pretty well. And I've just taken a little nibble out of the fold of both exactly at that point where they overlap. That's called a tailor's tack. Ah. Okay, it's called a tailor's tack. So it's, it's an old sewing thing that is very, very, very helpful and I'll show you how it works, but uh, it's a great way to mark that point. So you're working from the middle to both ends, so it will lay, lay flat, right? Yes. You work from the middle. You go to right. both ends. And now I'm going to cut the tailor's tack apart. So I've pulled the thread back so that I have good, nice long tails on both of them so that I won't accidentally pull them out when I'm messing with the fabric. Um, so you have nice long tails in both directions on both these tacks, and you snip that thread in the middle. Um, so that you, now you can work with the two pieces independently, okay? So now I've, I'm going to take both pieces, put them right sides up, because we're going to make a diagonal cut again. Put them both with their right sides up, and you can see the fold here. This is the right side up, this is right side up, okay? And I'm going to align these two points with a pin. I just stick a pin in one of them, and stick it through into that other one, and that will align that those two points exactly. Okay. And so these my points are aligned, and what I've done is I've stuck a pin on either side of that to keep them nicely aligned. So I've got two pieces now, right sides together. Sorry, right sides up, 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 up. So the, but the lengths are together here. We're preparing to make that diagonal cut. So both the folds are up, the right sides are up, the tacks are aligned, the two strips are nice and straight together. 
and I'm putting it on the 45 degree line on my board. Okay, there's a 45 degree line. The quilt is down here and the tails are up here. These are just waste product up here. These are the tails. But the quilt is down here. And that's the important part to remember. And now we, you know, measure twice, cut once, make, <laughs> just double check everything's in good alignment. And where are we going to cut? <clears throat> you want to tell me where we're going to cut? On the pin? I think I'm, oh, <laughs> through okay. the tack. So from the tack, this is where we want our seam. Ah. The tacks are marking where we want the seam. That, that's what's going to give us the exact right length, okay? <clears throat> so we want a quarter of an inch beyond that tack. And when I say beyond, I mean farther from the quilt, right? So the quilt's down here. I want to go a quarter inch beyond that. I'm going to align it with this vertical line on my board. So again, just like we did before, a 45 degree line. Here's your vertical. We're going to get a perfect cut. And I want it to be a quarter of an inch beyond that tack. Okay. Okay, double check. Now I've got my guide here. This is just my straight edge. Quarter of an inch beyond my tack. And do it. Okay, so now you can see I've got them separated here. Again, I still have my tailor tacks are in place. Okay, and this time, now I'm going to get ready to sew. So I'm going to put the right sides together. So again, my fold is up, this fold is up. I'm going to put those right sides together. It gets a little awkward, and that's one of the reasons we left ourselves some room to play. That's why you need at least 12 inches to do that with. That's why we started at 12 inches down. Okay. I have made it too short and regretted it. So <laughs> this is a voice of experience talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, I'm going to align my tack this time. The right sides are together. I put some pins in it if you need three pins or four pins, but because sometimes it's a little awkward. You've got the quilt here, everything's attached, so you don't have a lot of room to play. But again, you're going to line it up just like we did before with our little rabbit ears, and we're going to sew from notch to notch right through that guy. Okay, this should mark exactly where the seam is going. So there it is, that's that last seam. It's right through the tail attack. That's fine, we can pull the thread out, no problem. And here we've held it notch to notch. And then I laid it out and checked the length. If you need to adjust the length, now is the time to do it. Sometimes it might, if it's a little long, you just do that seam again and make it a tiny bit tighter. Or if you need to, you can pull out the seam and readjust. But anyway, um, this is the time to do those fixings. Then, I, then I'll lay it out like that and pin it in place and sew it. And now it's all sewn on. Look at that. No bulky, bunchy, anything. And these go in different directions, but that doesn't make any difference. It's fine. This is, um, now, now I'm going to pull out the thread. Or snip it if you need to. If you sew through it, sometimes you need to snip it. That's fine. Joyce, I have a question. Sure. Most of this is over my head, but, <laughs> <laughs> but why, <laughs> what, what, but why, why? I think I can answer my own question. You have several strips, several pieces sewn together diagonally out of the same type of fabric, the same color, in order that you can poof it out and make it look, make it look like a, you know, cushioned rather than using one. No. Um, do you understand? Well, well, this is this Leia, this is what we're creating. We needed the length in order to go all the way around our quilt. 
And Janet was talking about measuring. Oh, because you don't have one fabric that's long enough. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the fabric is 45 inches wide. Okay, okay. 44, 45 is sort of standard, somewhere between 42 and 45. So <laughs> if we, if we want to go the whole distance around this quilt, so it's about 40 by 60. Oh, I get so, it. Okay. So, okay, so if it's 40 by 60, what's the total circumference of the quilt? Get out your plain geometry, ladies. 200. Well, say it again. 200. 200. 200 is exactly right. So what you do is you take 40 times 2 plus 60 times 2, and you get 200. So that was pretty easy math. Um, so we're going to need 200 inches. And that's one of the reasons I cut six pieces of it, because 6 times 40, more or less, is 240. So it's close. Anyway. And it gives you a little extra because you lose a little every time you do a diagonal cut, right? Thank you. Thank so, you. so anyway, so we have enough length now. But what I'm doing here with my needle is I'm sewing, uh, blind stitching to bind the, the second half of this binding around the raw edges to put all those raw edges inside. That's what we're calling the binding. We're binding those raw edges. So here's a little close up so you can see it better. So here's your binding. You folded it over onto the back of the quilt. This is the back of the quilt. You, you see this stitching line? This is the stitching line we just made. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is I want to just cover that stitching line. That becomes my guide for where this edge should be. And I stick my needle in just above my machine stitching line. And I don't see you doing what all you are saying. Why don't I see you doing it all? Well, you're seeing a still picture of me doing it yesterday. Right? I, can't, I don't have a camera to show you what I'm doing. And you can actually see it better this way on the photographs. Okay? So I've stuck the wall. On the wall in back of you? Do you not see my background? Spot? I see a background in back of you of, of you're, paintings. Is that you're anything? looking at my face. You're not looking at my slide. Look at the picture, the photograph. On the okay. wall in back of you, huh? No, it's not on the wall behind me. It's in another, um, in another frame. Does everybody else see the pictures? Yeah, Jen says yes. So it must be there somewhere. Um, so maybe look and see. But you have, you're looking at the picture of my face. And instead, I want you to look at the picture of the quilt that I'm sewing. You have to look down instead of up. OK. So anyway, you can see here that I've stuck my needle in just beyond this machine stitching line. And I bring it up, just taking a little nibble out of the binding itself so that the binding stitches almost disappear. <coughs> Excuse me. And keep going around. So again, that's your guideline. When you get to a corner, you first sew all the way to the end. So you make sure that this the binding is staying the same nice width. I've come down here and I've, I've stitched even a couple of stitches to make it nice and secure right here, right at the very end of the quilt. I don't worry about turning it until I've gotten to that point. Now I'm going to turn it back the other way and make sure that the fold line comes right to that intersection. And sometimes you have to fuss with the folding a little bit, but just tuck a little bit more under or so, whatever. But to make that line, this is called mitering the corner. So making sure that you've got a nice diagonal line here. Oh, it's just like in woodworking, mitering. Exactly. Yes, exactly like in woodworking. My brother and I compare notes. He's the carpenter and I'm the quilter. <laughs> there's, there's a lot they have in common. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> so you can go in business together. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, business. And we're done. Oh, it's so hey. Wow, it's I love the way you accented the all around the border with almost the same colors that are in the pictures themselves. You're an they, artist. They are the same color. So I, I found something that would bring out this yellow and it turned out to be one of my batiks, but I, I like the effect. And then this it's is very, also, very, also a batik, has a little bit of flower in it, but that went with the, with the program here. And you can see it's very similar to the colors in these animals. And you, is this going to be hung up at the senior center? Well, I was thinking we could go ahead and, and make it one of the quilts that they can sell because this is these are materials that were donated to the senior center and we've done it together. So it's our common project. But then I repeated these same fabrics in the borders. So you did this in one week. <laughs> did you get any sleep? <laughs> I start. I started it Friday night. <laughs> Friday night, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, mm -hmm. and I, I finished the binding when I was at a Zoom call yesterday. <laughs> a couple <laughs> of movies, a Zoom call or two, and that's oh all it took to do. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You can't put a price on that because it took, it's time consuming, and it's a lot of uh, thinking on how you're going to fit five, it's a lot easier to do six. And your brain was doing all the work. Right. You are exactly <laughs> right. So now you can, now you see why I get sort of angry when I hear people say, oh, you want $30 for that? I can get that for 10 <laughs> It's like, give me time a break. I said, gotta tell two them time, time, time is days. money. Yeah, two and a half days of my life. What that happened? <laughs> Wow. Thank you very it's much, Jerry. It's a masterpiece. It's oh. a masterpiece. Jenny, well, well, I'm hoping these slides will be available on the Brookline website because I know I have to go over them again. But no, I was no, yeah. something on YouTube and the woman said, make a diagonal. You know, this is, you make this diagonal before you. Um, so on the binding, uh, and so I did, and somehow my diagonal was nowhere near where my binding should have been. So you hold it up and let us all see it? <laughs> and you see it, no, so look at it. Oh it's yeah. a big piece. It's a large piece, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. It's a big book. And then they said... Is it good enough to sleep, on, sleep under? To sleep under? Yes, it's going to be a gift for somebody. And um, then they said to transfer the, and I don't understand this. They said, well, put the diagonal on the front. <laughs> oh. And okay. so I did that and got a little bit better, but not <laughs> nearly as good as your point. So I want to go over and, and, the, and sure. review the slides. And then the other thing is for years, I would do that that when you put the two, when you're making this big long strip, I would put them together at right angles and sew the diagonal and nowhere did I, finally I, I had to look at the picture under a magnifying glass to see that I needed to fudge them a quarter of an inch apart. Mm. So I love your idea of putting it on the 45 degree angle and then cutting it straight and having us. <laughs> I think you like the other side of your, your um, thing thing better than the, than the other side, Janet. The colorful like side the better than the blue and white side. I'll see what I, I don't know how much I have left of the blue. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll put the video up and uh, I'll see, I can maybe make you a handout too. Oh, Millicent here already. No, it was Millicent here. 
Oh, there's your cake. Wonderful. What, what was it for? What's it for? Yeah, but it's only half. It didn't rise very much. I tried a new recipe, but it's a fun cake. It's for my granddaughter's ninth birthday. Oh, okay. great! I had a bun cake for my birthday too. I had one of those for my birthday too. Happy belated birthday! <laughs> So I have the, I'm, I made pictures as they made the quilt. I thought maybe we could talk about earlier pieces of the construction of that, uh, especially framing and putting all those strips around and making sure that the quilt stays square. Um, that's one of those challenges. Janice <laughs> nodding her head. She's been there. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll talk about sort of framing it next time getting all those pieces to be exactly the right size and lining up and putting the sashing and things like that. This so. is so exciting. I'm so excited. I can't wait for COVID to be over and I can <laughs> you're, you're a good teacher and everybody's Thank so you. nice. Thank you. And, and it's kind of nice being able to do these sort of presentations, which is, it's harder to do when we're in the group at the center. So we'll, take advantage of this time and then it'll be wonderful to be back together again as well.